go metal on my mind, that's a different kind of bling. Mayweather on that grind, that's a different kind of spring. Muhammad in his prime, that's a different kind of sting. I put in over time, I'm like Kobe in the gym. No punches can hold me down. On this edition of Titans All Access, we have a lot of football to cover. I mean a lot of football. Coach Mack takes us beneath the surface to show how the Jayon Big Jeff connection combines for a major takeaway. And John Robinson lays out why this weekend's mini buy for the Titans is so important. This show is packed, so let's do this thing. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry, sacked to John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is maybe the most wonderful week of the year because we have not one Titans game to talk about, but two because of Thursday night football. Absolutely. I love the shows where we can literally cram as much football as possible into one show. This should be a 90-minute show. Agreed. But it's only going to be a 30-minute show. And the Titans have played two games. They played a Thursday night game with Indianapolis. But we began with a Sunday win over the Chicago Bears. So let's start there and look at the key moments from the victory over Chicago. It's time for Titans football. Mike Keith and Dave McGinnis are set to bring you every play of Tennessee and Chicago from Nissan Stadium in Nashville. So the Tennessee Titans will have a different look today. Even though they look different, uh, they may have some different people in uniform. They have to play together as one. Foles gives it inside Montgomery. Stacked up, driven back, pushed, driven, stop. No, sir, Reed. It's Brown making the catch, breaking a tackle in the 45, round 50, 45, 40, 35. Deep dig across the middle, perfect throw. What a great run after catch by A.J. Brown. Going to put it down at the 30. It's a 40-yard attempt, left half. Snap, set, kick. Good! Gaskowski is true from 40. And the Titans draw first blood, 422 remaining first quarter. Tannehill takes the snap, looks, fires deep downfield, going for Brown. He caught it at the 10, at the 5. He stretched the ball. Ah, touchdown! Tight. A.J. Brown with play strength to spare. And the Titans have a 40-yard TD. Play fake fold, feeling heat. Oh my goodness, Jayon Brown got there first, and then I think Laurel Murchison might have cleaned it up. What a job by the Titans defense, 0 of 8 on third downs, the Chicago Bears at halftime, Tennessee 10, Chicago nothing. Foles tries to screen it, Montgomery on the right side, Big Jeff is there, the ball comes loose, the Titans pick it up, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, in zone. Touchdown, tight. Play fake, Tannehill rolling, throwing, catching, Smith. Touchdown, tight. Red zone money, Ryan Tannehill. Firing short, got it complete to Miller. He lost the ball, and the Titans have recovered it. The man who knocked it out was Brown. The man who recovered it was Simmons. <laughs> And the Titans have the ball at the Bear 43. Foles looks for Graham, throws for him. That's a touchdown. Jimmy Graham has it. 24 to 17, 64 seconds to go. The last time the Titans gave up an onside kick against the Chicago Bears, November 27, 2016. If the Titans recover it, the game is over as the Bears cannot stop the clock. It looks like he's going to do a drop kick. Santos with a drop kick. The Titans have covered it, and they are going to be able to win this football game. With a final score of Tennessee 24, Chicago 17, and the Titans get it done again. Play fake, throws in the flat, Foreman. Touchdown, Titans! Deontay Foreman looking 
under pressure. Sack! Taken down by Daquan Jones. They hand off Janu around left end. Touchdown, tight! Janu Smith with the reverse action to Peter. So that was a lot of football. Some good, some not quite as good, but a lot of football nonetheless. Absolutely it was, and there's still a lot of football left to come this season. Yeah, just remember, we're going to see the Colts again in two weeks. And we owe them one. One up there last time. That's true. So we'll see. But there's, there's a lot to talk about, a lot more to come on this edition of Titans All Access. When we come back, a visit with Roger Saffold, uh, one of the more interesting guys on the Tennessee Titans roster, the left guard is our Nissan Insider, and that is up next. It's hard to believe, but maybe the most interesting man on the Tennessee Titans roster is left guard Roger Saffold. Do you have, Amy Wells, a most interesting Roger Saffold fact? Well, Roger Saffold owns an eSports team that's, like, very successful. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. There's a lot more to this guy than meets the eye, but it all starts with football and with family, even though he's interested in so many different things. Professional athletes have to deal with failure. You think about baseball players, if you're a 300 hitter, that means you don't get a hit seven out of 10 times. You've got to deal with the failure. As an offensive lineman, you have to do that at certain instances too. How hard is it to learn how to deal with adversity, to deal with failure, and put it in the right place so that you can build on it towards succeeding. The big thing about being an offensive lineman is that none of your stats are good. So you, you never want to have any stats against your name. But the only thing that you can do is to try to work on what you can control. And what you can control is your work ethic, the way that you learn in the classroom, the way that you work with your teammates. And you put all that energy of being nervous, of having doubt, and you put all that into something constructive, and then eventually things will end up turning out your way. You know, it took me some time to kind of get into the flow with this team, and, you know, it just didn't bother me. I, I, I was really just at the point, like, if everything's going to work out in due time, everything's going to work out in due time. You know, even though I had that slow start, being able to be an alternate for the Pro Bowl, be able to make some, some quality changes up front, and uh, with the offense in general, you know, I just, I just give it all to the work ethic. This summer, you lost your dad. And you, you mm -hmm. talked about that. People deal with loss very differently. Some people don't bring it up. You talked about it very publicly. Why has that meant something to you to be able to discuss losing your dad so openly entering this season? I think it's because when you hold on to things like that, they can cause a lot more harm than good. I feel like I need to be able to open up, be more transparent. If I can be transparent with my teammates and my community, then it's gonna make things a lot easier for me. I've got tremendous support from these guys. And I also really care about the team. So when I think about those guys and the way that they supported me through my toughest time in my life, you know, I want people to know about the type of guys that these guys are. It's just all about what I can do for the team. Roger Saffold is an interesting guy. I enjoyed that chat. Oh, absolutely. He's just so cool. He is cool. <laughs> He's cool. <laughs> Hope some of that sort of rubbed off. It didn't. <laughs> when we come back, another guy who's really cool, John Robinson, talks about strategic planning towards this mini buy may be really important to this beat up Titans football team. Oh, absolutely, because as we've said, there's a lot more football to come. And rest is important. We'll talk about the rest of the season when Titans All Access continues. That was kind of cool. Back in the Bet MGM studio, Titans All Access continues with the Farm Bureau scouting report. General Manager John Robinson is here, but. There's no game this weekend because the Titans played on Thursday night. So, John, because you had your bye weekend so early in the season, does this mini bye weekend become even a little more important for the Titans as you look down the stretch? Yeah, Mike, I mean, I think certainly it'll give, you know, the players a chance to, to allow their bodies uh, to heal up, you know, a couple extra days after the Thursday night game. And, and the coaches a chance to, to kind of catch their breath before we start preparations for Baltimore. So, we'll, you know, we'll go through that schedule and make sure we build in enough time that everybody can kind of recharge and, and, and reset for the second half of the season here. Okay, so from a football standpoint, 
How do you handle the weekend and really the early part of next week? Yeah, uh, you know, Coach Vrabel, he'll he'll set the schedule with with the staff, but but the players, you know, we have to remain in the COVID testing, so that'll be a daily occurrence that you know that everybody will will still have to do, you know. But we'll start to get an early early look on Baltimore and, and game planning for for those guys. But also, again, like I said, take some time and and, and kind of recharge, uh, reintroduce ourselves to to our families, spend a little bit of time with them uh, before we get back going on uh, on football. You touched on the football staff a little bit, but that also would include the scouting staff, the personnel staff. What sorts of things are you aiming towards this weekend into the early part of next week? Well, I hope to catch up on some, on some college games. I've been able to, to watch some as they've come in. You know, mainly the SEC games are, are starting to hit our database and, and go through those prospects and start to evaluate those prospects. But, you know, probably catch up on, on that over the weekend and, and then, like I said, turn the page and, and get ready for the Ravens. All right, let's talk a little football. I want to talk about your quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. What have you been most impressed with with Ryan Tannehill through the first nine games of this season? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he, he's really built upon what, what he did at the end of, of last last season, the 2019 season, made some really impressive throws this year. Down the field, short to intermediate, timing timing throws. His leadership continues to, you know, stand out, not just for the offense, but for the for the entire football team, uh, the command that he has, the respect that he has of his teammates, uh, and he's making plays for us, you know, certainly with his arm, but but the, with his legs too, because he, he, he can get out of the pocket, he can scramble, and he can hurt you on the move. Derrick Henry has been the number one or the number two rusher in the NFL all this year, led the league in rushing a year ago. What is it about Derrick Henry that allows him to be so consistent, seemingly week in, week out? Yeah, I think I think he's a really resilient uh, player. I think he he welcomes uh, the fact when when teams walk an extra player down into the box to, to try to stop him. I think he takes that as as a challenge, and, and he knows he's got the respect of that defense, and, and he keeps plugging and he keeps playing, and you know he, he can he can bang away and. and, and two or three yards or four or five yards here or there. And then you never know when, when the big one's going to break, you know, and he's going to rattle off a 20, 25, or as we've seen a couple 99 yarders and, and just impactful plays that really change the scope of a game. I know in the John Robinson scouting report brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance next week on Titans All Access, we'll dive deeply into the Baltimore Ravens, but can you give us a little peek, a little overview of what you think of the Ravens so far? Yeah, I mean they've still got they've got playmakers uh, on, on both sides of the ball. You know, it, it starts on offense with with Jackson, their quarterback, uh, just an electric player. Can, can beat you with his arm. Can take off and scramble and, and design runs and make plays. They've got a good backfield. Got talented receivers and tight ends. Defensively, Coach Martindale still on that side of the ball. He's mixing stuff up. He's cooking things up. Rookie linebacker Queens playing really, really good for him. They got good corners in Humphrey, and, and they've got they've got guys that can that can hurt you on both sides of the football. All right, as they play the Patriots this weekend, game's going to be on TV. I just wondered. How do you watch that? Do you sit and watch the game like a fan, or do you wait for the tape to come in? How do you do it? No, I, I mean I'll, I'll watch it live as it's going. I won't have a big bowl of popcorn and a you know 48 ounce soda beside me. But you're watching those those live games and, and seeing if you can pick up anything from from the TV copies. That's something we do internally anyway. But then then you get to the you know to the all 22 and, and try to break down and see if you can see any schemes or tendencies that that might help us. John. Hope you get a chance to catch your breath this weekend. I know you'll stay connected to ball, as you always do. Thanks for the time. The Scouting Report brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you. Jayon Brown and Jeffrey Simmons combined for a takeaway in the Pittsburgh game. They did it again against Chicago. Dave McGinnis explains how when Titans All Access continues. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at three key plays of the Titans defense against the Chicago Bears that really generated a good feeling for the defense against the Bears. It also was very, very important for the Titans defense to create turnovers in this ball game. Let's take a look at some of these plays. 
First play we're going to look at here, then the second quarter, 350, first and 10 at the minus 39. You can see that the Bears are in 12 personnel. That's two tight ends, two wides, one back. The two wide receivers are in what we call a flop formation on the right side of the defensive part of the field. The Tennessee Titans are in man-to-man -man defense. Watch them shift this five-man front down to a solid look, covering the guards in the center with the outside. We're in man-to-man. -man. Jayon Brown has the tight end man-to-man. -man. As they bump across in motion, he now has the tight end man-to-man, -man, and then he executes what we call an ad blitz. Watch this ad blitz. His man blocks, so he adds to the pressure up front and creates a big sack. This is a very good play, both fundamentally and physically, by Jayon Brown and the Tennessee Titans defense with an ad blitz for a big sack. Second play we're looking at is third and 13. Ball's on the 30 yard line, 515 third quarter. Titans are ahead 10 to nothing now at this point. This is now 11 personnel, three wides, one tight, one back. You're going to look at a flash screen. This is a flare screen on this down and distance by the Chicago Bears. Watch how well big Jeffrey Simmons and the entire defensive front execute what we call running out of the stack. Watch them run out of the stack as soon as they recognize this ball is thrown laterally. Tremendous play by Jeffrey Simmons to get out there and knock the ball out of Montgomery's hand. And then brand new addition, Desmond King to the Titans defense. He scoops and scores. This is a huge, huge play at this point in the ball game. It's great effort, running out of the stack, pursuit, and then very alert play by new addition Desmond King, scoop and score, touchdown Titans. The final play is first and 10, balls on the 34 yard line, 353 in the fourth quarter. Titans are now ahead 24 to 10. This is again 11 personnel. We've got all the wide splits on the outside. The ball is completed inside. Now the Titans have deployed themselves into a zone coverage on this down and distance. Watch the zone coverage unfold. Here's a pressure. They are now in zone coverage. Very, very sharp play by Jayon Brown. Watch him trigger. Watch him trigger on this zone throw that's thrown underneath, short of the sticks. He triggers and then watch the club punch. Watch him punch this out. Watch him club and punch this ball out with his left hand. Recovery for the Tennessee Titans defense. Another big, huge play with the turnover. Tennessee Titans, really nice day defensively, added to a big win for the Tennessee Titans to push them to 6-2 and two on the season over the Chicago Bears. Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? Send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. On the next Titans All Access, Jayon Brown is getting old? No, he's not. But 5-5 is taking a leadership role in the expanding Titans defense. And he'll talk about it in the Nissan Insider. John Robinson has the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report on the Baltimore Ravens. And it's time to learn what Get Loud is all about as you hear the backstory of the Titans' new theme. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. This is normally where we do the keys to the game, and Amy asked me my three keys. And obviously, there's no ball game this weekend because we play two in five days. And so the real key right now is just rest. Catch your breath, because remember, the Titans were supposed to have their bye weekend the last full weekend in October, and that got moved up. And so now this mini bye becomes even more important. And let's take stock. The Titans are six and three. They're two and one in the division. They're still tied atop the division with Indianapolis with seven games to play. So you kind of have to say, okay, there are things we need to fix, but we're still not in bad shape. Absolutely. There are a lot of good things going for this Titans team right now. And now they have a couple days to rest, recover, heal their bodies, and hopefully get some guys who've been dealing with some injuries back on the field against the Baltimore Ravens. That is all really good. And you covered the sidelines for this particular game against the Colts. A lot of guys dinged up need this time off. A lot of guys dinged up and a lot of guys clearly playing through injuries. So to be able to have some time to get their bodies back on track and be playing closer to 100%, this time of year nobody on a football team is playing at 100% health. 
but to get closer to that mark, feel a little bit stronger, a little bit better, can be very helpful. And maybe the Titans get some reinforcements back like Adoree Jackson. Ooh, Adoree Jackson, how great would that be, not only for the Titans secondary, but for the defense as a whole. Adoree Jackson is on the active roster now. He has come off injured reserve. Obviously, he didn't play against the Colts, but the hope is maybe some of this extra work will give him time to, to be ready for the final seven games of the year. Offensively, too, Derrick Henry keeps on rolling. Another 100-yard game for him. He's knocking on the door of 1,000 yards once again. He is the part of this team that just remains so consistent. Absolutely, and you can tell that he works to maintain that high level. He works to keep his body right. He works to continue to improve when he's on the field. His consistency is almost amazing. The fact that he's able to perform time after time after time, and he just keeps grinding at it. That's a mature player, and I'm glad he's on our team. And what about going to Baltimore? The last time we were there in January, the Titans won a divisional round playoff game. Very exciting performance. Certainly the Ravens will remember that. Yeah, I think the Ravens might be playing for something just a little bit. They'll say all week long that they don't care about the game, and the Titans will say all week long it's just another game. It's not for either team. Are you going to watch them on Sunday night against the Patriots? Well, of course I am. Yeah, I'm going to watch all the football on Sunday night, but, or on Sunday during the day, but yeah, I'm going to watch that game. I'm going to be scouting. I'm going to be scouting that one, too. John Robinson says he won't have a bowl of popcorn, but he'll be watching it as well. I'll have some. All right, so what's your number one key to the mini-buy weekend? Uh, rest. Rest and rest. recovery. Yep. Mm -hmm. i got to get leaves up. Mm. i got to get all the leaves up. That's my guy. No, I'm resting. That's my key. Hmm. I'll text you. You text me. <laughs> I'll tell you how it's going. I'll take pictures. Great. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.